If you're a regular reader of TechRaptor, or you've just casually found one of our videos online, you may have noticed that we've been covering a lot of app arcade games lately. And while the growing library almost seems endless, I've only had a chance to truly review a few games, so I figured at the end of the year I'd put a video together that just kind of highlights some of the other games I played that just didn't interest me enough to do a full review on, but I still think are worth checking out. So here's five Apple Arcade games that I played that you should really play, even though I didn't review them. I don't know, it's a really weird title of this video. Let's get on with it. Mini Motorways is the perfect blend of addictive and relaxing gameplay, mixed with easy to look at visuals, and it gives kind of a zen-like approach to city management. It can be extremely frustrating when destinations spawn on the other side of the map, nowhere near any of its needed cars, and sometimes the game just doesn't slow down. While I really like this game, and overall I think it's totally something that you should have if you own an iPad and you have Apple Arcade, the game could absolutely use a time skip mode or possibly free play mode or something where you just don't lose immediately. Cause it's a real bummer when you can't get a car to the other side of the road and then you lose all of your progress. Like, I understand this game is about lightning fast kind of city management and it's supposed to be as minimalistic as possible, but come on. Sometimes it just really sucks when I lose because I couldn't move one car to the other side of the road quick enough. Still, with all that being said, it's still worth checking out and it's really good for killing a few minutes and getting the gears warmed up in your brain. The next one up is You Are The Rink, or is it You're The Rink, or Er The Rink? Not really sure. If you wished NFL Blitz was a lightning fast hockey game and you could be one of the greatest athletes in Los Angeles, then You Are The Rink is totally for you. It's fun, has tons of content and legendary athletes from various sports, and it's easy to play. Within my first minute, I was having a blast. This is one of the standout games on Apple Arcade, and I'll do a full review on it once the online features in the season begin in 2020. But for now, you should totally check it out. Our third game is the one that Apple seems to show off the most, Oceanhorn 2. Oceanhorn 2 is the 3D, totally not Zelda, pirate treasure looting adventure that I didn't think I needed to play until now. I'm not familiar with the Oceanhorn series, and quite frankly, I don't even know what Oceanhorn 1 is. But from the moment I began to play it, I knew this would be something else. It's also a major battery killer, but hey, an open world with current gen graphics on a mobile device, that eh, doesn't come cheap. If you're looking for something akin to a Zelda game and have a charger nearby, then give Oceanhorn 2 a shot. It plays incredibly well on all Apple platforms, but the iPhone is by far the most comfortable. And if you got an iPhone 11 Pro for Christmas, those visuals look amazing on the HDR OLED. So there you go, show it off that way. Our fourth game is Various Daylife. Various Daylife is one of the more interesting titles on Apple Arcade at the moment. Not because it takes 30 hours to beat, and then it's a full-blown square JRPG, but because it kind of controls, unlike any other game you've played. The game consists of your typical JRPG job focused party with a first-person view when in combat. There's a ton of dialogue, so the fast forward button is real nice because, oh my god, they never stop talking. Overall, this is a pretty hefty game, and I may give it a more in-depth look down the road. I just don't know if I want to play a JRPG on my phone for 30 hours, but if you're into that, this is totally for you. And quite frankly, considering that every other JRPG on the phone is just a glorified gambling simulator, you should probably check this out. Seriously. And rounding up our list is Shanti and the Seven Sirens. Developer WayForward managed to do the impossible with Shanti. They made a platformer work on a touchscreen that didn't feel like it was on a touchscreen. So with the help of 3D touch and some clever vibrations in game, Shanti never felt awkward or weird when playing through it. In fact, it felt like I was actually pushing real buttons, even though there were none. This did make a problem when I tried to play it on an iPad, because there is no 3D touch there. So if you have a phone, seriously play it on that. Or unless you're playing with a controller, because then obviously that, you know, defeats the purpose of 3D touch. Other than that, it's pretty much Shanti. If you're into that, you know what to expect. The game looks amazing, feels exactly as it should, and, well, there's not much more to say about it. If you're looking for a platformer that actually plays like a platformer, or you're a fan of the series, then this is a no-brainer. This first year of Apple Arcade has been pretty great to say the least, and while I've only had a chance to cover a handful of titles like this in previous videos, it seems like every day there's something new that's worth checking out. So as long as Apple can keep the momentum going into 2020, mobile games are finally where they should be. 